Okay, let's get started, team. Let us line up. Go, Melissa. Line up, Adrian. You made it just in time. Line up, Michael Quinn. Line up, Melissa. Good work, everybody. Okay, attention. Wow. We're gonna take us through a couple of stretches. Then Professor Cam is going to go through some warm-up drills. All right. So find a little bit of space and let's follow this lead, okay? Just one one main stretch, but it's a full body stretch, and it's going to be sort of like a uh, vinyasa, but modified for jujitsu. Right. So let's come up right here and come up to your toes this way. Try to find balance. Come down, touch your toes, come up, flatten your back, down, hands down, step back here, push up, up dog, down dog. Now here's where it gets a little creative, okay? I want everyone to Bring your leg up and then step it across. Could everyone see this? All right, so you're stepping your foot across. And we're gonna do this each time. Leg up, across, and you're walking toward your hands. Here. Until we make it eventually all the way back to our hands and then allow your feet to settle and then back up. Right? Up, point your toes, point your balance there. And one more time, back down. Flat back. And now here we can step, or if you'd like, place the weight into your hands and pop back with control. Lower, flatten your feet, up dog position. Down dog here, and let's do the same thing. Leg up, step across, kind of like a partial sit-down drill. And you're moving toward your hands. And then settle here. Then again, up. Flat feet right here. Let's just lean a little bit to one side. Breathe in. Exhale, other side. Breathe out. Back in. And one more time. Come down. Touch your toes. Flat back. Hands down. Walkers or jump back. Push up. Up dog, down dog. Now, exaggerate, uh, uh, let's change this a little bit. We're gonna come up with each step, this, and now we're walking a tightrope. So instead of stepping across, just step your toes right in front of your other foot. So your toes will be landing right in front of the other one, like you're on a tightrope after each twist, all right? so. Up, twist, keep the weight even in both hands so you're not leaning to one hand and place the foot in front. Up, twist, foot in front. Continue that long. Keep breathing. Good, up, with your toes, breathe, good. All right, so uh, that's a modified version of a simple kind of yoga flow. Uh, I like the extra stretches and balance required to do that. Great way to warm up, get your whole body engaged. Now we get the blood flowing a little bit more 
Professor Cam will take over here for a few minutes. And we'll be back for some more Q&A, some technique, and to keep the class going. All right. Let me check. I want to see if anyone else has jumped on, and we'll get started. Good. All right. Same group. Okay, team. Keep it going. Okay, team. So the next one we're going to do, my legs are going to be staggered just like this. So I'm on one line. My feet are parallel. One knee's bent, one leg straight. I'm just going to replace my feet right here. So my weight is over my bent knee. I just replace it over here. Back and forth. You can use your hands too to simulate like a bullfighter pass going back and forth right here. So some people get confused when we do this drill is when we switch, we keep the weight on the other side. So my weight stays center, switch my feet, still over this line, going back and forth. Okay, team. And you can also imagine if you guys want to, like you're passing the guard back and forth. All right, let's go. Here, we're switching our feet. Good, so our weight are staying standing. Good. Good job, team. Good job. Now you can use your hands like you're simulating the bullfighter pass. I'm like grabbing, pull, Pull, pull. Good. <laughs> okay, time. So the next show right here, we're gonna do our regular break. Oh, let me skip back. Okay. So the next show we're gonna do our break fall. So I'm gonna break fall here. Opposite hand, opposite foot. Come up to my base. Step forward. Break fall. Opposite hand, opposite foot. Back to my base. So let's begin team, let's go. I'm gonna move the camera. Okay. So we're break falling, up, back down, break falling, up, back down. Good job team, time. Okay, the next drill we're going to do, we're gonna do push-ups. We're gonna do a little modified right here. So every time we do a push-up, we're gonna come back into like this downward dog position. I'm gonna step my foot up here, push up, come back down. Push up, back down. So my butt's in the air. So this is more like a resting position. Come up here, I can keep my foot on the ground or to make it a little bit more challenging, take your foot off the ground. Come up. You don't have to do that. Just foot down, back to downward dog. Foot down, back to downward dog. Okay, team, let's begin. Let's go. So, butt back, drop down, come back. Going back and forth. Okay, time team. So this next one, it's a new one. So I'm gonna be in like, I don't know, child pose position, but I'm gonna be springing on my feet. So I'm gonna be on the balls of my feet. I'm gonna put my weight back here. Then I'm gonna jump forward, pull myself forward, up, squat, and then I come back. So I'm coming back, up. Here, so I'm using my hips, spring myself back, and then I'm pushing up, standing up tall to my base. So we're here, back, up, forward. Back, up, forward. All right, Tim, so let's try this one. Go ahead, nice, easy pace. You don't have to do this one too fast. Let's try this one all together. 
Are our weights going back? Can I pull myself forward, stand up tall, and I just throw myself back. Catch myself up and back. Good. Keep going, team. Keep going. Yeah. You're coming all the way back to more like a turtle position here. And I'm throwing myself from that turtle. So you drop your hips down, butt down, and then spring back up. Keep going, team. A few more. Nine. Good job. Let's do our floor drills now. So the first one we're gonna do is just regular swing our legs back and forth. We're gonna the ground for balance. Swing our legs back and forth just like this. If you need some extra time to stretch, feel free to stretch down. Switch, stretch down. All right, we'll start with our whip team. Let's go. Good, back and forth team. Keep going, keep going. All right, time to now, right here. So we're kicking the door. So one, two, behind, one, two, behind. Just be aware, keep that foot above your belt knot. Work on a flexible guard right here, right here, and then behind the stretch. Let's begin, team. So one, two, behind. One, two, behind. One, two, Behind. Good, keep going, keep going. Time. All right, next one, make sure we have some space to so watch your teammates to do around the world. So that back foot from our sitting base, draw a big counterclockwise circle, swing your leg, draw a circle, follow your momentum, and come back to your base on the other side. So we're going around the world, back and forth. Let's begin, team. So here, swing, don't kick your teammates, and back and forth. Good job, team. Time. All right, so the next one, we're going to roll back and catch yourself. So here, roll back over your shoulder. Catch yourself with a straight leg. Drop your hips down. Close your foot on the ground. So we're in this position here. I just slide that straight leg through. I come back to my seated position. So I can scoot up if I need space. Roll back. Catch, pause. And then come through and sit down. So make sure you have some space, roll through, catch, pause, and let's keep practicing this one. Let's go, team. So roll back. Good, keep going, Tim, keep practicing. All right, last one, everyone. So everyone get one more and one more good one. 
Good. Okay, team. So next drill, still staying in our base. We're gonna do our candlestick. So I'm here. So I fall to that same side shoulder. Then we're coming back the same side. So I'm here. Fall to your shoulder. Hips up high. Right here. I don't want my hips collapse. Hips up tall. I'm using my hands to support my lower back. Hips as high as I can. Come back to the same side. And then switch your base and go again. So we're here. Hips up. Come back to the same side. Switch your base and keep going. All right, team. Let's begin. Candlestick. Take your time, team. You don't have to rush this one. Take your time. Straight out. <coughs> Stretch. Get up high. Back down. Switch sides. Just keep going. Time team. Okay, so the next show we're gonna do, we're gonna do our triangles. So here I'm gonna be on my back, my hips coming up, triangle. Make sure when we do this one, both of our feet are flexed and my legs aren't straight, relaxed. Both your feet flexed, exaggerate that hip up, triangle. Both my feet are flexed right here. Not my, my toes are important. Flex your feet, triangle, triangle. Belts coming off the ground every time. All right, team, let's practice this one. Let's go. Triangle up. Keep going, keep going. Good job team, time. All right, so the next show we're gonna do from the same position is just our bridges. So really exaggerate your hips going up four. So hips up high, turn, touch, come back, turn, touch. So exaggerate the hips up four before we start our turn. So. Hips up, I use that to turn. Hips up, turn, back and forth. Let's go, Tim, let's begin. Good team, so let's turn that into stripping in place now. So here on our backs, same position, straighten our legs, push yourself away, and I pull myself flat. So I'm starting flat on my back, turn to my side, pull myself flat. Should stay in the same spot, shrimping back and forth, staying in place. All right, team, let's begin. So we're shrimping one side and then the other side.
Keep going, keep going. Time, team. Okay, so next one, we're gonna shrimp and go belly down. So just make sure, be mindful of your space. If you don't have enough space in this one, you can always do the regular shrimp we just did. So now we're shrimping, but I'm gonna walk my feet and go belly down right here. Let's come back up, sit down and do the other side. So I shrimp, then I'm walking my feet, belly down, and I'm walking my hips back to where my hands are and practicing again. So try this one out, make sure you guys have some room and let's see if we can do this one. So shrimping, going belly down. Just begin to, so here, shrimp, belly down, hands back up. Keep going, keep going. Okay, time team. All right, there's got a few more to do. So everyone keep pushing and stay tough. So next one will be in this position, one knee up, one knee down. We're gonna go five on each side, so I'm gonna count. One knee up, one knee down, stand up, kick, we come back down with control. So we're gonna go five on one side on my count, five on the other side, my count. So we're in this position, one knee up, one knee down. Doesn't matter if it's your right or left knee. If everyone get in position right now, one knee up, one knee down. We're gonna go five on my count. So we're leaning forward and opposite hand, opposite foot. Ready, team. Everyone in position, ready. One, kick, and we come back down. Good. Two, kick, come back down. So both, one knee's on the ground, one knee's pointing up. Three, good. Four, and last one, five. Good, now let's switch our legs. So now the other knees up, other knees down. Working on my base. Ready. One, two, three, four, nice, and five. Good. Okay, team. So this next one, we're gonna do explosive push up. We're gonna do them with control. So this is a drill you can do to really work on your athleticism without having to need a lot of requirements to do. So when we do this one, I'm gonna be on my knees right here. So if I need to start doing regular push-ups, I can do regular push-ups, but my knees are gonna be on the ground the whole time. I'm gonna push up, I'm gonna throw my arms back. So I'm gonna do a big chest right here, throw my arms back, and I'm catching myself on the down. So we're here, so I push up, throw my hands, come back. Push up, throw my hands, and then I come back. That's too challenging. Well, you don't want to hurt your wrist or anything like that. Just keep your knees on the ground and just take your arms off the ground a little bit. Just work on taking your hands off the ground and you can build up to a bigger motion. So we're doing explosive push-ups as soon as we touch, throw our arms up. Don't hit your teammates, Jack. You don't hit Melissa. And then coming back down. All right, ready, team. So take your time. We're just going to go do this one for a time. So let's begin. So push up, arms up, and then I'm catching myself on the down. Keep going, keep going. Nine, last one team, last one, and 10. Good job. Okay team, so now we're gonna do some drills from our 
from sitting down right here. So the first one I'm going to do, my hands are going to be up. We're going to do 10 of these. So my hands are going to be up. I'm going to kick my feet to my hands. My arms are going to be straight the whole time. I'm not going to move my arms. My feet are going to my hands, and they're staying off the ground right here. So we're going to do 10 of these, and then we're going to do our rapid fire. But first, we're going to do 10 uh, kicking our hands. All right, team. So our hands up right here. Good posture, so chest up, feet stay off the ground. We do 10 of them on my count. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. That's a really good drill to do, to work on your hip flexors and to work on having a strong guard. So if you ever feel like you need to work on your bottom game, there's a lot of drills like staying in this position, using our core. And if you want to work on your top game, your pressure, that's when we do a lot of the sit outs and other drills. We put a lot of weight on our arms. So now we do five rapid fire. It's going to be four reps every time I count. Opposite hand, opposite foot. Kick right here. So we're going to one, two, three, four. That's going to be one rep. We're going to do five of them on my count. So get some space. Find your balance. Ready to hands up. Ready. One, one, two, three, two, three, four, five. One more team, one more, and six. Good job. You want to show technique? Okay, team, so that's going to be our workout slash our warm up. So now we're getting to technique. Um, so, you know, we're going to, we're going to do a couple of, uh, Kind of still, I want to share a solo drill, but uh, based on some technical ideas, a lot of the drills that we've been doing have been on our backs, right? And um, real great for guard retention. And then for guard passing, it seems a little awkward to do drills uh, other than like standing drills. But I want to show an idea uh, and we can work and practice this a little bit just to give you sort of a flow type drill to be worked uh, for the passing game we don't have a partner to drill with. Uh, and then we'll get to a little bit of Q&A, all right? So the drill is, let me get the space real quick. The drill is just gonna be um, like kind of a, this type position. Not a, not a full out, you know, plank, but kind of here, right? And you imagine your hands are controlling your, your partner. Since we don't have a partner, we're here, right? And the movement really I wanna do, is just staying low and just kind of moving this way. And then adding in the, the slight sit out. And the sit out is representative of a cut through type pass, not a sit out necessarily, right? Although it can be, okay? So kind of three movements, and maybe I'll add more if I think of them, right? But let's do these together right now. So everybody get in position just through a couple of minutes, okay? What I want to see, and the moving around is, is kind of imagine like you've pinned a hip and a knee, and we're moving around this way. Right here, come around. Everybody's doing this with me. Around, around, cut through, short range. Right here, good. Now I keep my position, right? Now I'm gonna do a movement, relax for a second. And these can be modified, but this will be a bit of a almost shotgun style pass. I'll try to do it this way so you can see a little better, right? Press you down, I just come up and switch. Come up and switch. See that? So as I'm kicking up, it's like the drill we did before. Remember the, we're walking up and going here. I'm kicking up and landing across my other foot here. Let's try a few of these reps here, okay? Is that Sam? What's up, buddy? Good to see you. All right. Now get busy working. And then we'll do some, uh, then we'll do some Q&A. All right, guys, one more time, and then I want to see everybody moving, even Narium with his tank top on. Right, so right here, kick up with the left and land with the left. 
then back up. Kick up with the right, land with the right, then reset. And then we're gonna tie all these together in a moment, okay? Norm, I know you have space. Good, Melissa and Jack. Good job, Donovan. Oh, back up. Okay, now look, pause. So I just noticed something. Um, check it out. A few of you are stepping back. I'm not doing this. I'm staying right here. You see, I'm right over my center line. Very important. So watch how, when I'm here, my hips are, what I'm not doing, what I'm not doing is this. That's not necessarily incorrect, but for this drill, I wanna see up, so it's left, right, left, right. But I've landed, I'm in the same position, right? Here, and then reset, right, left, reset. Let's do that, guys, go. Good, that's better. Good, Donovan, that's the best one yet. Hey, a little one. <laughs> okay, let's tie all three together now, team, okay? And by the way, you're probably feeling it, but this is a good little cardio workout because you're engaging a lot of your, your body, your shoulders and chest, your core to twist you and your legs. So now, back to here, knees bent. Let's move around the circles, ready? Everyone get ready, we're all doing this together. And then we're moving here, moving here, move. Sort of half circles here. Cut through. And shotguns. Good. Okay. So now you see how those movements can be translated into passing visualization drills. I'm not just warming up and stretching. That's how I'm moving when I pass the guard, right? So. I am to a little bit this way. I am moving around, cutting through. Shot. Three passes that I can put to work without a partner. So make that part of your um, solo drilling. When you wake up in the morning, when you're doing, you know, you have 10 minutes here and there to drill. Uh, that will make you stronger in your position. What I see often in passing the guard is you know how to do the guard pass, but we lose our pressure and control, okay? We're coming to pass and we lose it because we don't have enough structure in our posture and in our base. There's no different standing, right? You know the grips, you know the throws, your posture and base is off. So that's so why we need to be moving, uh, practicing, finding our center line. The shotgun one is maybe the, the best one for practicing that. Because if I go here, my weight's way to the left. Where was the opponent? Right here. They're getting away. But if I'm pinning, boom, I'm right there. And I got rid of the legs. You pass immediately. Okay, so hope you enjoyed the drill. Let's open up for some questions. And we have Sam on with his little one. Sam is a judo black belt, by the way. So Sam, while you're holding your child, I may, I may have to uh, demonstrate uh, judo if anybody has any questions about that. 
Uh, maybe you'll just have to fertilize it. But, um, or if you want to ask a question, you can do that too. But um, let's open it up for some questions. I'm going to mute you, Sam, just so it, uh, you know. Yes, sir, Jack. All right. My question is for Sam. Uh, my judo is awful. What are some good uh, foot drills um, that you can do by yourself to uh, improve your, uh, uh, I guess, your your motions? Are there any good foot drills? Did you get that, Sam? That was, that was a question for you. I did. I did. Okay. There, no, there, I see. Are, there are some good footsteps. I'm actually going in front of a, a mirror right now. I don't know if I can like flip my, if you guys can see my feet. Yeah, that's perfect. There are these drills that you can do that they call making the triangle that help with throws. And it's kind of like you can step one kind of in front of you and then turn your foot to the side a little bit as much as you can on your toe. So here and then stepping in kind of straight. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's just kind of like a little dance you can do is just and get kind of used to that motion and then back out. It's kind of a little like one, two with your foot. I don't know if that helps. Yeah, yeah. So that that's basically like kind of the fit into a lot of the throws that you're gonna do, and just finding the rhythm in that. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And one thing I've noticed, like Sam, um, I mean, I'm, you did a lot more judo than me for for a lot longer, but like before class would start, like we had the Diamondback Club all those years ago, all you guys were like on the mat, moving around like like you're dancing by yourselves. You know what I mean? And you're all doing Correct. those motions. And if you don't know what you're looking at, that can just seem like, like, what are they, like, what are they doing? Are they, is that a weird warm up? And no, you're actually like, you're replicating how your feet are going to move when you're in the fight. And I think that's, that's super important. Um, Jack, does that, does that kind of, uh, does that drill help you? Yes, it, it does. Yeah. And I mean, you can, I mean, you can do like, you can do a thousand of those. You know, if you had a partner, you had to pull, you get it tired a little faster. But if you're doing that by yourself, you can really sharpen the accuracy of where your feet are landing because you can knock out so many repetitions. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Sam, thank you, brother. Good drill. Good drill. Um, all right. Would anyone else like to look at anything specific? Melissa. Yes, ma'am. Give us an empowering question. Okay, well, I'm not sure how empowering it is, but it's also a question for Sam. Awesome. Okay, so my training partner is a, is a wrestler and he's been hip tossing me quite frequently. He's bigger than me, he's much bigger. Um, and I'm not really sure what an appropriate counter is. Do you have any advice for me? Hip toss from Sam. <laughs> Yeah, can you uh, show me an example? Um, I also wrestled as well. Um, I started wrestling when I was super young, like five or six years old. So I have like a couple ideas of what a hip toss is in my mind. Can you show me exactly if you're able to? Jack, are you throw about this now. Like a, like a, like a hip toss. No, he's not. He's yeah, not okay, I, I'm not sure. When he comes at me, like he's like barreling through with his head too, I'm like right here. So right here, he's like driving through with his head, and I already feel off balance there. So I kind of relate a lot of questions like this to when somebody asks you like. Oh, how do you get out of like a rear naked choke? And you get kind of responses like, oh, don't, don't get there. Um, so it's kind of something, a lot of answers that's very similar to that. There, there are slight steps you can do before that to prevent somebody from hip throwing you. But very, very first thing is hand fighting. 
um, I don't like the idea of someone getting like across my waist or even grabbing um, on the inside, like inside control of me. So I am constantly fighting somebody's hands, whether it's gi, no gi, wrestling, judo, jiu-jitsu. They all kind of follow this concept. You, you have to fight with your hands before someone would come closer to get to you. Like yesterday, Travis was showing like breaking the grips, kind of the same thing with no gi. Like you're fighting someone's hands, either two on one or a collar tie. If someone is collar tied with you and they're moving to the inside, I peel their hand off the back of my head instantly or I pull back in. It's kind of the same situation when you're in like an over under on the underhook side. If someone has an underhook on me, the first thing I'm doing is my head position is on the inside of that underhook and then with my with my hand that's on the overhook side, I'm coming down on their head and getting back in kind of like my wrestling position. So there's a couple of things you can fight it before they get inside three for the throw or the hip toss. You can fight the hands or you can break the grip if it's a D type scenario. Hey Sam, let me add, let me kind of uh, just add a um, something that I know that Melissa does. Um, tell me what you think, like Melissa, and I'm kind of picking on you, but I'm serious too, is you'll play a lot of like, like parrying, like patty caking of grips. And so it's like, you'll swat a hand away, but you did not, you had a chance to intercept the grip, right? Yeah. And I, and I, and I don't know sometimes Melissa, like if you break a grip and, and allow it to go free, but grip exchanges, whether be no gi on the ground or standing, um it's not a it's not always like you have to take the opportunity to establish your own grip not just get away from me because they're going to figure out your rhythm you're like okay i'll just fake and then i'll get what i want but if you intercept the grip now you've given them the problem that they were trying to give you you've taken control of that situation would, would you agree with that sam like not just blocking but kind of intercepting when you can totally like um yesterday even Travis went through this a little bit. When Travis was breaking the grip, immediately, you know, on the cross grip, when he was breaking it, he was immediately going in for his own grip right after he broke his opponent's grip. So I, I would 100% agree with that. Awesome. Very cool. Good. Good questions, guys. Um, okay. Let's um, – I'm going to mute everybody just so – uh, easier to navigate here. Uh, do we have uh, do we have any more that we'd like to look at for the day? Anything from either the blue belt curriculum or um, concepts or techniques or maybe from some of the drills that we did earlier? No, we're good. Melissa, have one. Is she checking her phone? Adrian, let's do one more, and then I, I have something I, I, I can show. But uh, yeah, if we have questions, I'd like to take those. Yeah, go ahead. Well, well, actually, uh, good. I guess uh, just what's a uh, grip regrip kind of uh, like what's a good go-to regripping after you break a grip? Um, well, I'll kind of give my intake, and then I'm gonna let Sam chime in because, like I said, he has he has a lot of experience here too, and um, sometimes there are subtle differences. Uh, in jujitsu and what grips are allowed. Like, I'm pretty sure Sam, tell me like in, in judo, you're not allowed this grip, right? This kind of punch grip, but jujitsu you can. And then the other thing to you know, think about is when you're on your feet, you've got to have an idea in your head about are you thinking pulling guard, throwing, or maybe 50-50? Because the way you pull can change the way you grip while you're on your feet. And I was saying this uh, yesterday. And so if I'm not trying to throw, and if my opponent is going to pull guard, I've got to be aware of that too. So certain things with, you know, posture and gripping change, but just a, kind of a simple one. And let me, um, let me get the screen here for a second. Okay. Like if I'm here, if, uh, if just say like a, a common grip right here, for one, if I break the grip, whether I have sort of a traditional grip, or like many times in jujitsu, I, I like breaking with this punch grip, like fingers in, 
And sometimes I don't even need the other one, right? If I'm relaxed a little bit and he's kind of holding it, right? I can move a little and one-handed, just use the heel of my hand to break. Now, there's no reason that I should not win this grip because I my wrist is in control. I broke, boom, and now I'm here. You see this? This gives me the drag, throws, throws, because I'm in full control when I have here. So when you take a grip, don't ever make it, and I was talking with Michael Quinn about this. Sometimes he would say in guard, he'd just kind of grip here. Well, the problem with an even grip is it gets pummeled out and now you've lost it, right? So whether it's a punch grip, a pistol grip, or even a traditional kind of a judo grip, I still, like, uh, like when I learned this, I'm still about taking the slack out of this. So that there, when he tries to grip, I have the control, see? So think of like, when you're breaking a grip, you want to, you, you'd likely, you would like to be immediately in the winning um, part of that grip exchange. It's not like break grip, then go get a grip. You broke and you have it right away, right? So keep that in mind. Like when you break a grip, like it's yours. So is this, is this kind of the question you're, you're asking Adrian? Like when they- Yeah, this is really helpful. Yeah. Um, by the way, same thing from like the guard. Sometimes, you know, they have like a good uh, position here and I might want to break here, but now I'm going to offset. One of my favorite controls is like a kind of a pistol grip moving the wrist to the side and doubling up. Now, I don't think there's anything he can do to threaten the pass until he wins this or gets away from it. See? So try to posture up, try to get the hand back to gripping. See? Because of the angle that I had right there. And that's a little bit specific to the guard um, because, of, because of his lean and my guard, I can sort of uh, trap this grip to the outside, putting up a wall, there's no slack here. Like man, if you get this in a sitting guard, boom, you are, you're golden right there. So, uh, I'm glad we asked this question and like when Sam was giving his feedback on like, um, you know, uh, winning fighting hands, this, this is a game changing idea because we learn all these techniques and we get good at the technique, we get good at the big part of it, like the big picture. Like, man, my passing is smooth, my takedowns are smooth, my guard pulling is smooth. And then we run into handles, we run into grips and blocks and we're like, ah, these are annoying. It's, it's, a, it's like something that has to be won before you can do the, the whole technique. So in, in standing, you have to win the grips. Like if you watch, and like Sam will tell you this, I think I, I saw some of you posted, like you're watching like judo matches, like spending a lot of time watching judo fights. And I tell you guys this, like watch judo players. They, they almost sometimes look finicky like they're not really fighting much because they're just dealing with grips. And then the one that gets the grip is launching the other one. It's like, or, you know, a lot of times that's where they win. But there's a lot of time spent fighting grips. It's extremely important. Watch the top level jujitsu players on the ground. They're constantly breaking grips. Not every grip, because not every grip needs to be broken. An example of that, just so we're not, like if Professor Cameron's on his back, and I'm coming in to pass just kind of a cross collar grip. Like right here, I don't have to break this if he doesn't have a good uh, you know, control of his legs. So if he's pulling me down, but I'm past the legs, I like that grip. That's fine. Don't think you have to break every single grip, you'll go crazy. But you have to win the grip battle, right? That usually means you're one grip ahead of them, you know, to make it simple. You've got two, they've got one or you both had two, but one of yours or both of yours are stronger than theirs and you can move and control them when they can't do it. Um, so anyway, yeah, like, I mean, that's just kind of like my thought on it. I mean, it, it but you need to blend the idea of, you know, grip battling, you know, on the feet and, and on the ground. 
when passing, you're going to have to break. When defending the guard, you're going to have to break. And you're going to have to win and control. Is this helping a little bit, Adrian? Uh, most definitely. Uh, you've given me like some filters to think about like how and when I use my grips, not just like what grips exist. So that's really, that's a lot more helpful than the question that I had originally. That's, that's really, uh, thank you. Awesome. Sam, do you have any like feedback on, on that uh, kind of grip concepts? I think you're muted right now. Just to kind of build on that two on one great break that you were doing. Um, as soon as I pull off the two on one from my collar with yeah. my two hands, I'm immediately when I have pulled the slack out of his wrist, I'm immediately with my free hand or my op or my other hand going immediately to the collar. Okay, Either. so let's so let, let's, let me let me kind of walk me through that, make sure I'm doing it right so everybody understands. Like you're saying, like yep. immediately upon breaking, this hand is getting control. Is that correct? What yeah, absolutely. Okay. What whatever your favorite grip is, whether it's that grip, cross grip, reaching, you know, up over the top, whatever yep. your grip is, immediately my second hand is coming for a grip. And then once I've established my grip, I mean, a pulling guard, throwing, or some type of grappling takedown. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important too, because if you, because like if I just hang out here by myself, he's too free, right? He's going to work to break that grip, I think, right away or, or get his other grip. But yeah, if I, if I kind of break, oh, come in. Now, Professor Cameron has his left hand that he can do very little with and nothing with the right because. I'm in position to come in. Sorry, no, anything now. <laughs> Just start attacking. Yeah, that's a really good point too. Like a really good point. Um, like for your question, Adrian, uh, kind of practice, like when you drill it, make sure you drill that so that it becomes second nature to establish the whole, the whole control. Because if I break, yeah, if I break one and I'm like, yes, I got it. And then it's like, you're going to have it for one second or less. And then they're like, well, I don't like that. They're out of there. But if you get two, if you get two grips, this is like, I feel like this is an idea, like the, the time that I spent in judo, that was maybe the idea, the one idea that I took with me that had the most impact was that if I, if I got two controlling grips and they had one grip, that I was leading that dance, essentially. You know, I was, I was winning that game because I could control posture, I could control movement, and I could control who has to use more energy. So, um, yeah, great, uh, great addition to all that. Really good. Okay, guys, um, we're getting ready to wrap it up. If there are any more questions, we'll take them now. I think that's a lot of info to process and a lot of, um, some of you have a partner, you can, you can drill that. Um, but then we did a lot of solo drills we can do too, but are there any other questions for the evening? I mean, for the day, not evening. I'm looking forward so much to the evening because I'm on my fifth day of a five day fast. I get to eat tonight. I was worried like I'm gonna lose my, I'm gonna be like all foggy, but I'm pretty clear headed, but I'm, I'm definitely ready to eat. We're good guys? Cool, awesome. Sam, thank you brother. Really good to have you on the class. Thanks for the valuable input. Thank you guys for the questions. Keep showing up. We're going to keep doing the classes. Um, keep coming up with some, you know, more creative ways to keep everyone engaged. Uh, I just ask that you all continue to please come to as many classes as you can. I know we're busy and we're all dealing with the situation. Uh, and it means so much to me and to one another that we're, we're able to see each other every day and engage passionately in the thing we love, which is uh, martial arts. So keep coming to the classes with the questions. If you have any anything that you want to talk about or anything, you know, or concerns or whatever, you just want to, you just want to chat for a while, feel free to give us a call, send me an email, whatever you want to do. But um, I can't thank you guys enough. And we're going to keep trying to bring you guys the most value that we can. So awesome class once again, guys. Let's line up and let's bow out. Hmm. Okay.
Okay, team. Excellent work. Stand, fire side, attention, stand. Okay, team. Bow out. Good job, team. I'll see you guys in the next week. Or tomorrow. Yeah, we will uh, We will be here tomorrow at no class tonight, but we do have tomorrow at 10 o'clock if you guys want to jump on. Tomorrow at 10. Good work, everybody. I'm